Hello, and in today's tutorial, I wanted to show you how to do retro interfaces. I've been doing a lot lately, and I think I have a small workflow down that I want to share. So when we open up Blender, we'll have our default cube, camera, and light. We don't really need these, so we'll delete this. Um, and then we're going to go into the top orthographic view, which you can access with Numpad 7. I've created a script for my own purposes uh, to automate a lot of this stuff, but I'm just going to show you the basic workflow because uh, I don't want to get into how you can script a lot of things if you're unfamiliar with Python. I'm going to make this as uh, accessible as possible. All right, so we have our default cube here. Now, this will serve as a basis of building the grid. So we're going to select this. We're going to go into wireframe view, and we'll notice that it's gray. Now, Blender has a wonderful thing where you can color your grids or the wireframe. So when you have this selected, uh, you want to go into the object info or object properties, go into viewport display, and you'll notice there's something called color. We're just going to click on that, and let's just choose red for now. So we click on this. Well, we don't see red. The reason for that is we'll go into viewport shading on the top right and click on the drop-down arrow. I'll notice there's a setting called color, single. We'll set that to object, and now it inherits the color of the viewport display here. We can have some other things here like names, edges, and what other stuff uh, you want to be viewed. All right, so we have our first shape here. Uh, what I'm going to do is just duplicate this with Shift D, drag this out, and I'm going to change the color here to, let's just say, uh, uh, let's say blue here. All right. So we have red and blue. Uh, and of course, with the top orthographic view, we can like rotate this. And you can kind of see there's some really cool things happening. All right. So we're going to create a small grid here. I'm just going to move this blue grid off on the side. And it may be a little hard to see what's going on. So I recommend either going to the background color and switching it out, which doesn't work because it's using a theme. We go to the world, or it's actually viewport here, which is better, and we'll just darken this down here. We also have this grid that's kind of in the way, the X and Y axis. So if we go to the show overlays, we can get rid of the grids by toggling it off with the grid. Floor, we don't really need these. And I think that is good for now. All right, so now we can kind of see what's going on here. So we're going to build a grid. We're going to use the array modifier. And uh, so access it via the, I can't remember what this is called, modifier properties, array. And let's just do a five by five grid. And now you can kind of play around with this to see the distances of your grid, one's completely fine. And we're going to add another array, zero going up. Oh, wrong way. Y axis is up. I'm thinking in depth. <laughs> All right. So now we have it, our grid. And you can see you can do some really fun animations, right, just by moving it around and kind of pre vising what thing you might want to happen. Now, if you don't want your grid to like, bounce up because it's happening with relation to how hmm, how do I explain this uh, right now we're using relative offset which is relative to the bounds of the mesh but if you want a constant offset so that when we rotate it so as an example let's say it's going to always be this distance apart so you can see here that this intersections now because of constant offset if we do the same thing here let's move this up and you can also animate all these properties too, which I'll be getting. And now if we rotate this, you can see it's in place and doesn't move. Um, it depends on what kind of effect you're going for. You can play around with both of these and see which one you enjoy more. I'm just going to rename these to Y axis and X axis. So it's just easier to understand which is which. Another cool thing I kind of like to do is if we go into sorry uh yes shape keys we add our shape key by selecting this we'll add another one so what's going to happen is we can animate this property so you can rotate and do some other cool things here 
So right now, we're just going to tab into it and make an adjustment. So let's just say we want this rotated by, uh, let's see, maybe it rotates uh, one rotation, which would be 360 degrees. So I'm going to hit R, Z, so it's locked into the Z axis. And then I'm going to type in 360. Now I'll tap back out, and if I play with this value, nothing happened. <laughs> let's try 45 and see what happens instead. There we go. It's going to do 45 for now. Uh, there might be something specific with the 360. Okay. So we basically have it done. So what can we do here? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, we can play and t add in time signatures for the array here. You can see we can insert keyframes. So we can have it like pop up. So we can do that. It's gonna move this off to the side here. I, I kind of like animating uh, in different steps and then adjusting the keyframes for timing. So it's gonna select this and let us insert the keyframe because we know we want it at 2.01 or 2.00. Let's keep it 2.01. And now we're just gonna put this to zero. And we're gonna add in a keyframe. And if we play this, you can see it's popping up. Now it's kind of like tweening forward, which is kind of neat. Uh, I like the started like choppy frame rate stuff because I feel like it adds more to that retro technology vibe. And to access that, we'll have to open up the graph editor. So I've just dragged a window out here. And if you're unfamiliar with that, if you're kind of new to that, uh, you have to move your cursor to the top corner here, click hold and drag and sometimes it can be <laughs> quite a drag okay so we're going to go to the graph editor and now nothing selected here that's because we have to select our object and you can see here there's an action that's happening with the constant offset you can see currently too we have the constant offset of the x dragging up i'm just going to also limit this to maybe a let's say 100 frames and you can see that's our animation there what we can do is click on the X, uh, constant offset, hit N, modifiers. It's gonna drag this out so we can see what's happening here. And we can add a modifier called stepped interpolation. And now it's gonna uh, hold a frame, or skip every other frame. So if we play it, see it has more of that stuttering effect. It's like almost the processes Kind of cool. I kind of like that look. And you can play around with this too. Like you can have it like five, so it's even more stutty, st 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 stuttering. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to two. And so we have a Bezier curve that's like easing in, easing out. Uh, one thing I love using right now, lately, is something called the elastic because it kind of. I don't know. It's hard to explain the effect. It's. I like the way it just bounces Boop. like it's loading in we can exaggerate the effect a bit more you can see what's happening here like it bounces and stops that's an effect I've been using a lot uh, probably without the snapped effect here so you can see it's like bounces in but for this purpose we can probably just use linear I know I'm jumping around all the time here because um, I'm just you know reacting to what I see and that's something I uh, my my design process is very reactionary so that's pretty cool I like that uh, what I might add to is like when it when it clicks here I kind of want it to kind of like back up and click back like it's over exceeded its processing and move slightly retracted back so I think yeah, that looks a bit better like this. Click. I'm thinking in sounds as well too. Like I want some sort of like click sound or this is this to me signals like oh the grid has now been completed. So imagine if you're booting up this computer and this grid's being created in front of you and as soon as it does this to me uh, it's a telltale sign that now I can start doing whatever operation I want on this computer. That's a little way, uh, small ways, I think, here. All right. 
So we have this. We also created our shape keys. So let's play around with that. So we have our shape keys here. Value. So, you know, we can have it like rotate back and forth. So we can insert a keyframe. And there is something built in that I like called the sine wave. So if we play this, you can see it's doing this really cool back and forth. Now, the reason why it's... it's um, Kind of spastic is because we only have a value of 0 to 1 while this one is going from a value of 1 to negative 1 so what we might want to do is an additive and we can also increase a value offset so it doesn't be it's not as crazy you can lower the amplitude or increase it just 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 this just depends on like how snappy you want it uh, we can also make it a bit slower so it rotates not as crazily. Uh, let's maybe lower the amplitude and let's move this a bit lower here. Okay, let's move this a bit higher and let's add in a stepped interpolation. That's looking pretty cool, hey? And we only did this with a cube and a couple of arrays. So we'll click on this, and this another thing too is like I don't want this to continue happening once the grid has loaded in, because to me this information will confuse you. Like, hey, is my grid loaded or not? So we're gonna restrict the frame range. We're gonna start at zero and end. What do we end with the last one here? Like it clicks. I think this is fifty. Yes. So we're gonna end it at fifty, and we're gonna ease it in by five frames and five frames. And that is the stepped interpolation, which is something we don't need. So we had to do it up here. I got a little confused. Right, so uh, 55, five. And now you can see it only jiggles around there. We're just gonna cancel that. You can also like toggle it that way. So now when it starts up, like snaps like that. Do, 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 do. And I kind of want to be a bit faster in terms of its movements too. So we're going to play around with this. Oop. Let's see. How's this? All right. Now we can play around with this here. Uh, so one cool thing we can do is inherit all the properties or modifiers from this into here. So I'm going to click this, click this, and then link the modifiers. Whoops, backwards. Sorry, we're going to inherit. Yes, click the one you want to inherit first. This is animate too? No. Okay, so we just have the grid here, which is fine. I'm going to do it this way, and we move it slightly up. From here, we're going to look at our x and y axis. And Let's say, maybe I want it a little bit more spread out, make this a bit smaller. And I'm going to go to the y-axis, and I kind of want these squares inside the other squares. So I'm just going to eyeball this a little bit. Oh, let's bring this down here, and to me that looks, that looks good enough to me. So maybe once this is loaded in, these little squares will pop into existence. So we're going to create a shape key with a scale. And let's see here, do, do, do. go in here and let's just scale it maybe like that. So now that looks pretty cool. Huh? So we're going to start with one here because that's well, actually, maybe we should start at zero, hey? Let's see if we can do that. S zero. And now if we... Yes. That looks cool. Okay. So it's going to go like this. Around frame 50, 46. Let's just do it 50. Keep it even at 50. And then I can imagine some sort of like bing sound. And once that's happened... Uh, 
the next process of the computer will boot this other segment up and we can insert a keyframe here and let's just see what it looks like at frame 80. Uh, again, these uh, numbers I'm saying are completely arbitrary. It's all up to the timing of you. <laughs> let's go to insert a keyframe here. Oh, I've, as you can see, I've selected the wrong one. Oopsie. That happens. You always have to like select a previous object. Okay, let's delete this. 80 or 60. All right, I'm going to select this one here. Insert keyframe 80, like I said. Bring this up, insert keyframe. So now we play this. Click. Which is cool, but we can get it a little bit cooler. My eyes, at least. All right, so let's say it locks. I feel like it's a bit too long here. So it locks. And let's do it here. Click, boop, and then we can see what the elastic looks like. Is this what I wanted? Yes. Click. And then we can add in a stepped interpolation to have that. Do, 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 do. Click. Also, it's, at this point, it's just refining to your own taste. Um, I'm trying to think what else we can do here. We can, ooh, what happens if we insert, let's say, here, and then c come back down here, and we'll have one, zero. I am on the correct one. Insert keyframe. Oh, that is cool. Okay, let's do it with this one too. So, insert keyframe, go back here, one, insert keyframe. So, if we play this, <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much how I go about creating these geometric UI interfaces. Uh, I find the big things that help is to not have everything so smooth because it uh, kind of gives off the, I don't know, like uh, too much of a CG look and I like things being analog so I tend to have like stepped frames like this because I, I think in terms of like what the sounds would be like, maybe it's booting something up, maybe there's a servo or it has to recalculate something and uh, thinking about those limitations of what the computer or what the interface is for what 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 the machine is 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 limitations are i think can really inform the design that you're trying to do hopefully this helps i'd love to see more retro ui out in the world thank you